Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna finish this thing. This is part two of my trike build, and if you haven't seen the first part, it will be down in the description. You should go watch that, because otherwise, you're not gonna have any idea what's going on. All right, let's finish this thing up and try it out. At the end of part one, I finished up by showing you how I mounted the seat onto the frame. Basically, I just bolted it onto a piece of wood that was attached to a bracket. And next, I had to figure out the controls. I was using pieces of aluminum that I had taken off of some crutches. I just had to figure out where they needed to go and how long they needed to be. I cut them down to length and then drilled some holes on the frame to mount them. And for this, I started with a small bit just to make the hole all the way through, then moved up to a larger bit. Once the larger hole was drilled, I used a small bit to make a pilot on the opposite wall. That way my large drill bit had a place to sit so that the holes were parallel. I used a clamp to hold both of these pieces of aluminum tubing down so that they were faced the same direction. Then I just drilled some holes in them. Using the drill press here probably would have been more accurate, but it's not really that big of a deal. I just tried to make sure that the hole went straight through and not at an angle. I did a test fit of these pieces just to make sure that they moved in the correct way and that they weren't too tight. Then I had to drill some holes in the bottom of these pieces to attach them to the linkages of the back axle. I started with a hammer trying to flatten them out, flipping them over and flattening them again, but eventually went to the vise. It was a way to get a lot more pressure and get them a lot flatter. Once I had both of these pieces flattened down, I just had to drill a hole through both ends. To make the linkage that went to the back axle, I used some steel rod. I had to bend both ends of these rods into an S shape, and I did that by putting it in the vise and then just using a hammer to knock it over. The second one was a little bit tricky to figure out, but I took my time and it actually ended up working out pretty well. I tested these pieces as the linkage and they worked great. I made the bends in the other end of these bars in basically the same way. I made the first bend and then cut them off to length before making the second bend. The only real difference here is that the bends on one end are perpendicular to the other end of the bar. Next up, I had to make some holes to mount these on the back axle. I will say here that I already learned that I put them too close to the center and they need to be moved further out. I'll do that probably in the future. In any case, I drilled some holes and slid in the linkages. I had to put them into the steering rods before I mounted those rods to the frame. Then it was time to try it out. I got really excited and I took this thing out for its first test drive today and everything worked pretty well. The only problem I had was that the bar running between the control bar and the rear axle actually bent when I was trying to control it. It makes sense because I could bend those with my hands so they're probably not sturdy enough to use on here. So I'm just gonna chop off the little S shape that I made on these bars, weld them onto a thicker bar so I don't have to re-bend them and then just put them back in place. During that test I also found that the aluminum tubing I was using was just too weak and it bent. So I remade those pieces with some thicker wall aluminum conduit. In the end, it bent as well, so eventually I'll come back and remake those out of steel. Next, it was time to take the entire thing apart and get it ready for paint. I took off the wheels and then covered all the threaded pieces with some tape to make sure they didn't get paint on them. And then I used a grinder just to grind everything down and clean up the surfaces to get it ready for paint. Everybody hates the fact that I use spray paint, but it's quick and easy. And in this case, it doesn't really matter. After a couple of coats of black paint, I put everything back together, but this time I used Loctite on all the bolts to make sure that nothing would come loose. This especially worked well here because I could tighten the nuts without tightening it down on the wheel. I just reassembled everything, basically in the opposite order that I had put it together before, but with Loctite. I put on the control bars and then it was time for a final test. This thing is exhausting to ride, in case you can't tell. Overall, it's pretty cool. Does it work very well? No, not really. But I did learn a ton of stuff from this. If I were to do something like this again, I would definitely not make my own square tubing. Totally not worth it, and it's not really that strong. I would not use aluminum for these. In fact, I probably wouldn't use reclaimed stuff at all. I would just buy the right materials to make it right the first time. 
But either way, it was a lot of fun, I learned a lot, and I hope you did too. Let me know what you think about this one down in the comments. I've got lots of other videos that you might be interested in, so be sure to check those out, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.